Yolanda. <laughs> yes, I'm, I just got into this book. It's really interesting. When the syrup reaches 240 degrees Fahrenheit, immediately remove the pan from heat and, with the mixer running, pour the syrup into the egg whites in a very thin stream. You want me to put this book down? But we have to start in Turkey. Fine. I'll put my book down. Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week I am caking a straw hat like this one. To make my straw hat cake, I baked five pounds of my ultimate chocolate cake. That feels so low for a record-breakingly <laughs> low amount of cake. I'm used to saying like 18 pounds, 20 pounds, five pounds in two round pans. I didn't level one of them. You know why? Nice. Look at this straw hat. It's naturally sort of rounded. So I thought I'd leave the hump and work with it. Now that I have four layers of cake, I am going to simple syrup them all with the help of Sir Squeeze. Are you gonna keep it on the entire interview? No. I'm afraid of what, I'm really gonna look like I have beach hair once I take it off. So let's see. Do I have beach hair or hat head? Oh, I'm all right. <laughs> she has a reflection, guys. Like yeah, I look in the oven. If you ever see me doing this, I don't have a mirror beside me. I look in the oven window. I know it's a straw hat, but I'm making it a beautiful coral color, and I want my buttercream inside the cake to match. So I've decided to dye some of my Italian meringue buttercream a beautiful coral color using pink and orange. It's time to fill and stack my cake layers with my coral buttercream. So I just put down a cake layer, spread an even layer of buttercream, cake, buttercream, cake, buttercream, and then the final layer of cake is the one that I left the hump on. And now I wanna chill this cake to make it easier to carve. What I need to do is sort of round out the top edges and then just have a slight, it's just ever so slightly wider at the base than it is at the top. And I'm going to the beach. No. <laughs> and now I need to crumb coat and chill in the darker coral buttercream. Once my creme coat is set, I'm going to ice the hat one more time in the same buttercream and chill. The reason a crumb coat is so important is because it really locks the crumbs onto the cake in that first thin layer of buttercream. And then once it's chilled and I go back and ice it, I won't have to worry about those crumbs. This is especially true for a cake like my watermelon cake, which we will be doing a camp cake this year because we don't want crumbs in the rind of our watermelon. If you ever wanted to learn from me in real time, this is your chance. Camp Cake is a live stream baking event on Facebook happening on August 11th and 12th. I spend the entire day with you showing you how to bake incredible cakes and treats and answering all of your questions. This year we're offering two different days of caking fun. Registration is now open and for a limited time we are offering early bird prices. Can we have a little baby? Oh hey, thanks for your pricing. <laughs> Click the I for more information. It's gonna be so much fun, I can't wait. How many more days? Uh, you want me to do math, Orhan? <laughs> like a month <laughs> and a few days. A sun hat has a pretty long, wide brim. And in order to make my brim, I made the base for the brim out of gum paste. So to make the brim of my hat, you're just Mr. Popular, aren't you? Tell your girlfriends to call you at another time, Orhan. Ever since we called him the How to Cake It Hottie, the phone just keeps beeping, you know? To make the brim of my hat, I rolled out two pounds of gum paste that I dyed a charcoal gray, and I prepared my pizza pan by laying a piece of parchment over it, and at the edges where it curves, I didn't want the parchment to be wrinkly, so I just greased it really well with some vegetable shortening. I laid my sheet of gum paste over top of that and then I carefully trimmed the gum paste to the exact size of the pizza pan with a sharp paring knife. And then all you have to do is set this aside to dry. So like I said, you could do this a month before, two weeks before. You, I did mine a week before. I wouldn't suggest less than that, especially if you live in a hot place. Lucky you. Patricia Fan has made an awesome cactus pinata cake and I hear there might be a secret chamber in it. Please go to How to Cake It Step by Step, watch that video, and send Patricia some love in the comments over there. Click here to watch, and the link is also in the description below. It's time to roll out my coral colored fondant. I'm going to roll it into sheets. 
that are as thin as I can get them, a little bit less than an eighth of an inch thick, and then I'm going to use a textured rolling pin and just roll back and forth over it because I'm trying to create that straw texture. I need to cut a bunch of strips that are all even in width, so I'm cutting about a half an inch strip. You want them to be long enough to go around the circumference of this part of your hat. And now it's time to add these strips of textured fondant to my hat to create that straw hat texture. So basically what I'm gonna do is from the bottom up, add a strip, and then add the next strip and the next strip, and you want each strip to slightly overlap the last one. Next week, I am celebrating my birthday. I'm gonna cake a giant So if you don't wanna miss it, please subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. And something that you wished for might actually happen for your birthday. What? Tom Hardy is coming to set? No, I can't. Okay, moving on. So what I ended up doing is rolling more fauna and texturing it and then using circle cutters to create the top strips. So I was just overlapping circles at the top of the hat. And what's most important is that you make the top circle sort of look like the final bit of overlapping. There's footage, don't, I'm, I'm doing this. Just show them <laughs> the actual footage. That might be more helpful. And there you have it. Your hat is covered and we'll put it in the fridge to chill and set up before we add some more details. But nice. guess what? Guess not nice, Orhan. Because we have to do the brim of the hat in strips. This smile is fake. <laughs> Before I start to place my strips of coral fondant on the brim of my hat, I want to just clay extrude some of that fondant and place it on the very outer edge of my charcoal gum paste brim. And this is so that we just don't see it peek out when the hat is complete. I figure it'll be easier to glue on now than later. So what I did is I gathered all of my cake pens in every size and thought to myself, I'll cut concentric like circles that keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and putting them on the cake. If you trace the bottom part of the cake pan in comparison to flipping it upside down and tracing the rim, you get a circle that's about a half inch wider when you use it upside down, which is perfect because if you remember my strips were a half inch. So I decided to use every size of cake pan, first tracing this circle, then this circle, next size, this circle, that right? Here's the problem. I don't have a 15 inch round cake pan and I don't have a 13 inch round cake pan. So I had to look everywhere for any kind of like tray or plate that was the right size, bowl, anything that was the right size. I found them, I'm happy. Let's just put it this way, it was harder than it seemed. It sounded good in my mind, but it was harder than it seemed. And I realized from now on, I'm just gonna lay the whole circle on the hat and then cut out the inner circle while it's on the hat rather than trying to lift essentially a thin ring of fondant. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So once I've completed my brim of my hat, my hat is also covered, it is time to use one of my favorite tools. So this is a stitching tool and I'm going to use it to create all of the stitching lines that are used to hold a straw hat together. This is a great tool to have in any kitchen. I love it because it's really simple to use but super effective. Where would they get one? I'm glad you asked that, Orhan, <laughs> because it's now available at howtocakeit.com. But guess what? There's more fun where this came from. You have to stitch the entire brim of the hat as well. This is actually called an overstitch tool, and I overstitched. <laughs> now I know why it's called that. <laughs> I wanted to create a sash on this straw hat sort of wrapped around the base of the hat. So I marbled together some black fondant and white fondant, and then I braided them together and sort of mixed them up together and rolled it out. Then I cut two bands from my marbled fondant. Uh, one band is gonna be a continuous band wrapped around the base of the hat, and the other band we will cut and use to make 
um, like the tails and the knot, like it was tied around the hat. I'll take that first band of fondant that's long enough. First, I'm gonna prep the base of my hat by just brushing on a little clear piping gel to make sure the fondant sticks. Pick it up and wrap it around the base of the hat. Where it comes together, I'm going to trim the excess fondant and pinch either end, and that will be sort of the end uh, where it begins to look like it's knotted. So we've got that on, and then with the other band of fondant, I'm gonna cut two tails and then pinch the ends and add it to the cake where it meets the other two ends already on the cake. And then I'm just gonna take a short piece of the marbled fondant and sort of fold it over. I want my straw hat to have a cool saying as well. I soften some black fondant with a bit of vegetable shortening, run it through a clay extruder that just has like a flat base plate, and then I'm gonna use those thin bands of black fondant to create my lettering. So it looks like it was kind of stitched onto the hat. So you know what I'm gonna write on it? Take me away. Time to eat this straw hat cake. I have to eat so much stitching. <laughs> and don't forget to check out Trisha's cactus pinata cake over on How to Cake a Step by Step. Bye guys! Hold on, hold on. I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna finish my book. Oh, where was I? What was the temperature again? 240? Okay. <laughs>